intimate group. And um, <laughs> may I first of all welcome everyone to Coffee Buddies. You've heard it before, but um, I keep saying it. Coffee Buddies uh, is a uh, entertaining, engaging, and informing community. And um, it's been our privilege to be the be the be the pop up coffee breaks for um, for this very interesting conference, Biotech Gate uh, Digital. And um, uh, our goal is to try and um, bring into the system some form of serendipity and uh, and um, synchronicity, as I'm a great young Carl Jung fan, um, to, because we all know the, the person you most need to meet is the man or woman who sedans in front of you in a coffee queue. And um, it's very interesting, even this, I mean, the last nine coffee breaks, we've met interesting people and they has been bumping in and the collisions do occur and, and business is done and uh, it's very, very interesting. And uh, we're, we're really pleased to have KPMG as our knowledge partner and um, we've had a wonderful few days of going through the, this fascinating thing which is the growth of Asia and the growth of the Asian market, the growth of the Asian ecosystem and it, it's maturity into into something different and I think one of us, all of us are, are thinking will the center of gravity of, um, of the future of, of uh, life sciences, medicine, will it all be changing over the next 50 to 100 years? I mean, boy, it's going to be different. Um, and we loved um, the fact that Chris on Monday showed a, a, a lovely slide uh, or talked about Indonesia having the same population size as the US and so Boy, that's, uh, that's mind-blowing, really. Um, and today we were going to focus on one of my, if not my favourite country outside of where I live, which is India. Um, and India, what a wonderful country and full of wonderful people and great intellect. And uh, we're lucky to have as our discussion partner, Nikhil, um, who's going to give us some insights into India. And uh, I don't know whether, Ami, you're... you're um, which which part of the world is your antecedents? Where's your family from? Oh yeah, I grew up in uh, India uh, in a place called Alibagh, which is like suburbs of Bombay. So it's like we used to go to Bombay by ferry uh, on a ferry. Fantastic! Um, so it's a lovely uh, Bombay. tourist spot. Um, you're saying suburb, but it's a lovely tourist spot. Alibagh is very nice. Yeah, yeah. perfect weekend getaway. Yeah. Yes. Yes, so that's where I did my schooling and uh, uh, college degrees, and then I went to university in Bombay. Oh, fantastic! So I did. Uh, yeah, Nikhil. Which part of India are you from, Nikhil? I, I I'm at Mumbai. Ah, okay, excellent. Okay, yeah. So I was in UD City for my pharmacy, and then I went on to do PhD in London. But yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yes. thanks. So, wonderful. So I think we're very much. Um, uh, all great fans of India. So, Nick, a welcome to Coffee Buddies, the small group this morning, but people may join us. And um, I know you've got a couple of slides, but maybe you could introduce yourself, Nick. How, how, how have you got to where you are now? Who, who are so, you? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Tony. So, um, so I have been in consulting now for past 15, 30, 14 odd years, 13 to 15 years now. And um, my seventh year in KPMG, I was with PwC earlier um, in, in the management consulting team. Um, since, since the last six, seven years, I've been focusing on the sector, on, on uh, life sciences. And um, I do, uh, I, I, in KPMG, I, I help a lot of pharma companies on uh, their revenue as well as cost um, uh, impact. So uh, I'm a part of a team that does um, that does focus on EBITDA enhancement for uh, for uh, life sciences companies and um, um, done good amount of work in this particular space. I specialize in supply chain, manufacturing, distribution. It's basically the operations part. Um, and um, by education, I think so. So like like most of Indians, you would you would find. Um, I did my engineering and then followed it up with an MBA and then landed up in, in, in consulting. So very straightforward um, kind, of a, kind of a journey. And, so and I mean, that, 
supply chain must be a complex issue for for yeah. uh, your ecosystem. What what's I mean, are you are you constant, constantly trying to order, um, not order chaos, but I mean, I suppose in a way, ordering chaos. Yeah, which is the most difficult thing, right? As in, so, so in India, especially, um, see what happens is there are multitude of states with very different requirements and pharmaceuticals because of the the nature of the substance you have to have controlled environments. In some cases, a lot of cold storage requirements. So. Um, it, it does get challenging and um, while most companies uh, that I have interacted in India get their strategy right and uh, figure out, you know, uh, different ways to improve revenue, it's the, it's the, it's the last mile that really um, uh, creates a dent or cracks their plans, so, so to say. So ensuring that um, logistics, production, and the overall supply chain is taken care of is paramount, especially in, in any large country, be it, I, I can imagine the challenges would be similar in, in China, for example. Um, and um, yeah, and in India, those are, those are significant. The amount of inventory you store, where do you store it, what kind of partners you have, because you have a whole, uh, a whole gamut of partners who are available. You will have the best of best who will charge a premium and then you will have uh, a different set of operators who, who would be very cost competitive and for any company who is inter in a, who is interested in entering India, it would be a quite a compelling proposition. But um, but there are things that need to be taken care of before. And, and, and mod, if you like, the, f the future therapies, which are even more complicated, such as cell and gene therapy. I mean, where supply chain is, is, is complex anyway, where yeah. you know, is, is this... Um, I mean, what's the thoughts about all these incredibly high cost, extraordinarily high cost, high complexity, uh, not treatments, but cures? What's, what's yeah. your thoughts on that? So I'll, I'll give you a very interesting example, Tony. And um, initially we sought Chris's help also. And Chris has been, of course, um, as usual, He's been very kind in sharing whatever information that has been available. Uh, a couple of months back, uh, we had a, we had an opportunity to interact with um, with an Indian um, entrepreneur who was interested in setting up CAR T therapy in India. Now, um, these are these are expensive therapies used to treat um, cancer, and Chris has done some work um, on on a few of them. Um, but and and these these cost upwards of I think hundred thousand um, dollars in the U.S. and uh, uh, leading innovator companies have developed have developed um, these therapies. The idea was for a developing country like India, and this entrepreneur had a vision that we have to set up a, we have to set up a center, which is going to cost, which is, which is going to enable these treatments for Indian patients at one tenth the, the cost in developing countries. One tenth is still quite expensive for an, for an average Indian. But the idea was if this therapy has to be sold at, let's say, a 10,000 US dollars, then it needs certain set of ecosystem partners to come together. Um, and it's a bold, it's a bold idea. Yeah. The challenge is going to be on, on how do we enable the cold storages? How do we enable the supply chain systems? How do we enable the, the uh, patient information, confidentiality, and storage mechanisms, etc. So there are thoughts on these. There are it's a, it's a confluence of some really cutting edge ideas and the ground realities those that, that all of us know about. Um, it's going to be very interesting over the next three to five years to see how, and I'm sure um, um, there will be a, I mean, people will figure out a way out of, of, out of this, um, like they always have been, but, um, but it's a space to watch out for, Tony. Um, yeah. especially the, the, the way supply chain is evolving in, in this space. And just the, the, and, and clinical trials, our clinic, you know, um, I mean, I, if you look at the world's healthcare, but there's a lot of, a lot of interest in niche, niche indications. So rare diseases, um, and, um, and Clinical trials on modern therapies often are very small now. Um, so they're not like the days where 
you would go, you know, you wanted an antibiotic or you wanted a, 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 a cardiovascular drug. And India was an extremely interesting country to do, to get large populations uh, quite quickly. I mean, what's, you know, how, because I used to be worldwide head of clinical for Roche. And, okay. you know, we, we looked to India as, um, as um, if you, we were some of the pioneer in, in the pioneer groups looking at India and bringing clinical trials. But what I'm intrigued by um, is, is what, you know, what, what, what does big pharma in the West see as strategic about the Indian ecosystem? So uh, it's a very interesting question, Tony. So uh, there are there are different uh, there there are three things that are very um, compelling, I would say, about about the Indian ecosystem. One is a one is that you have a large domestic market. The market is not easy. There are price controls in place, um, but it's a large market, and um, and and presence here would would significantly um, add to add to any company's top line. The second is um, India that way is quite cost competitive. So um, a lot of lot of manufacturers in developed countries ha are looking at um, are looking for contract manufacturing, um, generics, um, um, and and that's a that that makes India one of the largest producers by volumes uh, across the globe. India as of now is 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 third in terms of volumes that are produced. Um, uh, for for medicines, so that's a very very compelling proposition for for any pharma company who who intends to be a, a global supplier. And third is these services. So you would find that a lot of these global um, cent, uh, uh, back offices or um, centers um, uh, are are set up in India. You have Abbott, Novartis, the the big pharma companies who have set up their um, support centers here. You have um, good quality manpower. There is fluency in terms of languages. So um, these are, I, I believe, these are three compelling value propositions for for any global pharma or any any pharma company that intends to set up either operations for India or intends to have global operations, so to say. Mm. Interesting. Well, should we go to your slides, my friend? Because um, sure. I could talk for some time without them. But let's bring you, because you've got some very beautiful slides. So let's um, bring them up. And I don't know whether the first slide has the question of what's it, what, can, what, what cities in the background. Let's have a look. Um, because, it, oh, no, it doesn't. We, we've, been, <laughs> we've been running that competition, um, Chris, uh, for the last, last couple of days. I don't know, Graham, what do you think? Are we getting some winners from it or? Graham, you're on mute. It's interesting, Luke, uh, Luke struggled, didn't he, uh, with the picture? Um, so uh, he felt it was Singapore, but it was actually Jakarta. So, uh, you know, it just goes to show um, how much some of these countries are, are developing, so. Very yeah, it makes it feel better. I, I've done that same test probably 20 times, all different geographies, and very rarely do people even get remotely close. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a great, great party game, that one. Um, right, Nickel, thank you, my friend. You've got some slides. Yeah. So, um, it's, a, it's a very short presentation, and like you said, more of a conversation. So, um, basic introduction about the report that we are talking about. Uh, the site selection report, and um, Amit, if you haven't already, then do visit the do visit the link that has that is shown here, and uh, you have a a, a, a site a, a report which talks about various sites in in Asia, with a emphasis across India, China, Hong Kong, and a really in depth view on what are the different policies, how are, what are the different trends in the markets, and why these are compelling sites for pharma companies to, to, to look at. Um, moving on, a quick snapshot about, about India, and you will find some of these um, in the report as well. So like I was saying, it is the third largest market by volume today. It is the 13th largest by value. And um, by, by some estimates, it's, uh, it's likely to become the ninth by 2023. 
um so yeah i mean it's it's something that is that is it's it's growing quite fast as of now the market size is about 41 billion dollars which is which is quite low as if you if you compare it uh, with with the top uh, top pharma companies that you have um, globally sorry this yeah um india has been so so the growth rate for the for the indian market has been upwards of 10 odd percent and if you really see how the market market splits you have the domestic as well as the export market and um, they are roughly about 50% um, each of these but they are growing at uh, at at different um, speeds so to say the the uh, domestic market of course is going quite fast it's in the range of about 12 to 14% and that is going to continue to that is going to accelerate significantly over the, over the next few years whereas the export market is growing at the rate of about 8 to 12% or um and this is primarily driven, driven by the outsourcing um and and the domestic the, the global operations that domestic pharma companies have the likes of dr reddy sipla um uh, and and they have been growing exponentially um over the past few years um this does not of course includes the include the services revenue which we spoke about which the global um, centers that have been established by large um, large pharma companies within within india um any any thoughts on on this before no i was going to what uh, what's, what's yeah, the, yeah. what government's perspective on the importance of life sciences so um if you if you really see this the the um, the various forums that are there for the industry for the industry within india they have been they have been um speaking to the government of the past 3 years uh or to to streamline a lot of processes uh for filing for registering um new products for setting up companies um uh, but it's really this year um uh, because of the covid pandemic that it has taken center stage and the government has taken notice and um, a lot of a lot of initiatives have been launched by the government in order to uh bring um or rather of elevate the status of uh, pharmaceuticals and life sciences in general uh within the country um there is a scheme that has been launched for uh for for making ensuring that the supplies the api supplies to are are made more in house rather than imports um uh, interestingly india imports about uh, 60% of all requirements um are are imported and so therefore um there is there is tremendous amount of reliance on imports especially for medicine manufacturing and the government intends to change that in the coming years so there is a lot of emphasis there uh there is a lot of emphasis that has been given to biotech um that is a strategic sector that has been subsector that has been identified and uh, various incubation centers um uh, special funds have been set up uh to to boost by the the biotech sector within within the country uh, a lot of pharma parks have been set up and we will we will talk about that um as well but uh, a good amount of focus by the government to the sector and it augurs well the timing is right um uh, for 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 growth of pharma within within india right and i mean just a couple, couple other quick i mean one of the things that's very clear from our from our nine coffee buddies is that the center of um the center of life sciences in many ways is is the US because of yeah the, the exploding IPO market the um there's an intensity there which seems to be extraordinary and um uh so in a way the center of the universe for life sciences is over there um is there you know the, the big picture the, this big geopolitical picture you know if i was to write it down feels like europe is a is a, an incubator for companies going to america and then america is putting big bucks into things to grow and then you know again what is there any dynamic you're seeing in a very high level that says that all these companies that are IPOing at enormous valuation things are looking at asia and india in a different way 
um the large pharma companies um especially and and so there is like you rightly said um that's the that's the ultimate destination that every pharma company wants to wants to set up which is the us market um interestingly what what we have seen and india depends a lot on exports to uh, in in pharmaceuticals so many companies depend on that to to make sure that they their top lines grow every year and um um with with the price control um expectations in the us too that definitely has has come under under pressure uh for us companies um many of them are looking at india from a investment point of view um they have realized that there are skill sets here which are uh for for apis as well as for formulations which are quite niche india has been developing complex generics or make for that matter apis um uh for for some time now and there is there there are a lot of mnas that we have seen over the past few years uh global companies picking up stakes in 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 indian companies and over the past few months especially uh large uh, pe funds when uh, have been have been quite active in um 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 uh, taking stake or rather buying out stakes in apis especially apis specialty chemicals that is a clear area of focus that they have identified to me yeah okay all right my friend thank you next slide yeah so um um and and the one other point that i would like to make here is you have the largest number of us fda plants outside of the us so it it is uh quite compelling for for pharma companies then to to outsource their productions to to india key growth drivers um uh for for the for the um for for global pharma to look at is you have a established ecosystem we talked about whether it is it's not only about uh the manufacturing plants but your um be it other supplies of maybe packing materials or the uh, supply of um of apis or for that matter uh, qualified personnel that's already available it's established and uh, you have a very stable regime in terms of um uh, what the expectations are from the market so uh, that's one the second is you have low manufacturing costs there are a lot of government initiatives there is a lot of simplification that has happened um they have the government in fact about 3 or 4 years back realized that setting up businesses in india is not easy and um they have streamlined a lot of processes which have really which has really improved the rankings in terms of ease of doing business for for india and that is something that um everyone has vouches for actually that there is significant improvement at the at the ground level you have a large pool of qualified personnel um a, a large body of scientists researchers chemists the government has established a lot of training institutes for uh for skilling across pharmaceutical operations be it in manufacturing or quality control um so there is a lot of uh, a lot of activity happening uh, which can which can really um you know bring uh, make sure that the industry grows significantly apart from that there is there is a usual market characteristics which is the increase in reliance on generics that is that we are seeing world over um and um, aging population um the rise of chronic disease diseases um so all of this is is really making sure that um the 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 growth drivers and the the foundation is set for for uh for growth within within the country but it, but um, nickel i mean these things i think uh probably 30 years ago they were um you know we would certainly have said there's low manufacturing costs we would have said there was an increasing number of qualified people there were the beginnings of government initiatives and that the ecosystem was getting more mature that was 30 years ago so i mean there's a, been a, a a linear growth in all of these things absolutely my, yeah my question to you is where's the tipping point where where are we going to add a fifth one which says uh you know india is now something else and and my interest is is in in 25 to 50 years which you know as i said i've look i can look back 30 years uh isn't 
it's just very close. It's so close, you wouldn't believe. I mean, what's, where was India going to be in 30 years? Difficult question, Tony, actually. Um, uh, but see, there are, there, are two, there are two important things that are, that are happening uh, within India. One is, um, it's not, it's not a, um, India is a volume game. You have price controls in place. Um, it is not going to be, it's not an easy market from, a, uh, from, from that point of view. Um, but what the government is doing is um, is trying to ensure that you have um, universal health coverage, um, the insurance penetration significantly um, improving insurance penetration significantly is one of the mandates that that is there on the government's agenda. And um, uh, the idea here is to make sure that spending in quality health care has which has been which has not been a priority for for the past quite a few decades um, is taking center stage. So that's point one, and um, it's a long way to go. And there are there are um, challenges on that front, but that's that's something that is happening. And the second is um, the R and D skill set that you have. So uh, many companies are in in the race to make sure that um, can we have uh, innovator drug that can be manufactured here. Um, I think the tipping point would be if we are able to achieve these two over the next few years. And I'm not sure about what the timeline should be or can be for that matter. But um, but if I, I would say that these are two milestones per se. And once we achieve a critical mass on the insurance front, as well as um, things uh, that could fall in place from an innovator drug development point of view, um, I would say that you know th that is that is something that would put India firmly on the on the radar uh, for for large scale development that could that that um, could happen here. Excellent. All right, my friend. Next slide. Thank you. Um, here we talked about some of the challenges and and uh, we've already talked about a few points here. The regulatory structure is quite, quite complex. Uh, you have multiple approvals. There are there are delays, um, which which do do happen. You have um, um, and and that is something that have to be factored in um, as of now. There is price control in place, which ensures and the objective here is pretty straightforward to make sure that uh, you have a for affordable healthcare uh, across for the for the large part of the population, especially for. Um, especially for people who are um, who are at the bottom of the pyramid. Um, over the past few years, we had seen slower growth in exports, primarily because um, because there were price control expectations in the in the U.S. and Indian companies have been focusing on other geographies as well. And finally, the regulatory scrutiny that that uh, that happens, and for a, for a very good reason. Um, you had um, U, uh, US FDA focusing ex uh, quite extensively on ensuring that the quality standards within um, at the Indian manufacturing sites are ensured. And um, uh, there were there were some challenges which were on spurious drugs, um, on lack of documentation within. Uh, but I think all of these are a few things that have been taken into consideration, have been taken into the strides, and there are significant developments that have happened um, over the past few years um, on, on these points. But nonetheless, these are challenges that need to be kept in mind for any company that is looking to set up operations within, with, on, in, within India. Excellent, excellent. Um, any more slides? Yeah, we have just one final slide after this, but... Um, uh, no, which I, is that's quite clear. So I think we're back to the the last slide. If you move on to the next slide, make it, yeah, yeah. So um, so recent policy announcements, um, which are um, so so if on the right hand side here, you see the in map India map and the regions that are highlighted are the clusters which you which are always in focus and Gujarat, Maharashtra. So. So there are about six, seven um, states which are significant drivers of pharma manufacturing and have been over the past few few decades. Uh, Karnataka, which is Bangalore and Hyderabad for that matter, um, are cities which are leading the development 
as well as the manufacture manufacturing for um, for Indian pharma. And of course, there is Gujarat, which is uh, many. There is a good concentration of pharma cluster here. Um, recent policy announcements that uh, the government has done. You have the the government has made it quite FDI friendly, so to say. Um, you have 100% FDI for greenfield and 74% FDI for brownfield now. Um, the clinical trial policy has been revamped. Um, there are several, um, it had several procedural issues. All of those have been streamlined. It's better than what it was in the past. Um, given the current emphasis, uh, um, and especially COVID has highlighted quite a few chinks in the armor, so to say, um, India has announced um, bulk drug parks as well as production link linked incentives. So uh, while the cost of production for APIs was not competitive earlier, these production link incentives can would, would serve um, to bring down the total cost of production for, for anyone who intends to set up uh, bulk drug manufacturing within India. And, India has, and the government has laid out about $1.3 billion for, for, for these incentives. And like I mentioned earlier, the clearances have been fast-tracked. The ease of doing business is something which is in focus. There's a lot of development that is happening on that front. And um, 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 just to just so that anyone who is entering, um, who wants to set up manufacturing facilities or offices in India, there is there is a fast track clearance window that has been that has been set up to to ensure that things happen rapidly. Interesting. Very good. Uh, well, that's a very good and very interesting presentation, Nikhil.